2K Sports pregame show. Here we are with Kenny the Jet Smith and the big diesel Shaquille O'Neal. Ernie Johnson, you're watching the NBA on 2K Sports. And it is Clipper basketball tonight as the Los Angeles Clippers go up against the Thunder out in Oklahoma City. Checking out Oklahoma City. They split the season series against these guys last season, two games apiece. Should be a good one tonight. And guys, we'll see DeAndre Jordan tonight. And although he's improved his free throw shooting, there's always a chance we could see the hack of Jordan come into play. A big fella, I, I hesitate to go there, but I know you have something to say about this. And do you think the NBA should change the rules to prevent that tactic from being used? Three answers, Ernie. No, no, and no. It didn't change it for me. It's part of the game. And as a player, you got to persevere and step up and hit them when you need to hit them. And you always know my motto, Ernie. What's that? I hit them when I need to hit them. Yeah. Okay. Well, NBA step, took steps last year to cut, the, cut it down this season, last season. But I don't know if that's the right direction. I, think, I agree Thank with you, Chad. Kenny. I think it, it, you're in the game. It's part of the game. You got to hit them when they hit them. Right. And down the stretch, four championships later, here's this man hit them. Thank you, Kenny. Yeah, that was very nice of you. Very nice of Could you. Could have been five if he would hit him. Get oh, yeah, if he hit it enough, yeah. <laughs> Could have been six. No, well, that wasn't well. me. That was Nick Anderson. Oh, that's oh, right. Come on now. Come on. Let's go to a break. Let's go to a break. No need Nick to go Anderson. there. Come need on. To go there. It's not me. It's Stop. history. Stop. Google it. 94-95. Magic for versus us. Rockets. Google it. What happened? Live from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 2K Sports proudly brings you the Thunder at the Peak at the Chesapeake Energy Arena. Along with Greg Anthony, Brett Berry, and our sideline reporter, David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Last out and for the Clippers, they won that game against the Spurs in San Antonio. And anytime you come off the bench, you know your role. And that night, it was about scoring. Well, good collective team unity. Everyone pitching in, so... Trying to win for one another. That's a good thing. Now it's ended down to David Aldridge standing by from the sidelines. David? Well, guys, we all know how hard Russell Westbrook plays every night. Coach Billy Donovan said he plays with such force and passion. He gets so intense, so competitive, so emotional, but he's doing a good job of bringing himself back together and understanding there's other guys out there depending on him. Kevin? And that's how Russ has always been, D.A., a high motor player who leaves it all out on the floor. So, Brent, surprises here early in the season. A, a few teams outperforming expectations. What can they do to keep building on this momentum? I think the coaching staff in these sort of instances, Kevin, maybe where you're, you're out kicking your coverage a little bit, maybe they've <laughs> got to re remind their team about you know, the small steps that we need to take. Yes, we're doing this. Don't forget about doing these things or... or what we're doing offensively, uh, uh, but make sure that the, the reality of what the season represents, that they understand that so their expectations don't get them too big-headed, so you have to reel them in. Sounds like you're talking about staying with the fundamentals. Well, the fundamentals can, can always help you, Kevin, and, and then also just continuity, making sure that each guy understands that you've done your role, continue to do your role, and the guys behind you are ready to go in case we start slipping. Here are the starters for Los Angeles. The heart of the team at the four and the five, Griffin and Jordan. Austin Rivers is out there with Patrick Beverly, and it's Gallinari in at the three slot. And he knocks down the first one. And a bit of a bittersweet question for you, Brent. We know you spent so many years with the Sonics who eventually were uprooted and became this Thunder team. How badly would you like to see Seattle get a basketball team again? I think it's the NBA's mission to get back to Seattle. And under Adam Silver, he's asked questions about the return to the Emerald City. And I, I think it's going to happen, Kevin. If it does, I'd love to be a part of what the organization does up there. I do miss the PNW. That's the Pacific Northwest. Now here's Jordan. And slam dunk by Jordan. Look how focused DeAndre Jordan is 
on those finishes. Must be nice if you're looking at the rim at eye level. George with the screen on Beverly. Westbrook kicks to George. Adams sets the pick for George. Adams outside. Back to George. Elbow shot is on the way. Here's Patterson. Great D that time from Griffin. On defense, the Thunder. And this is the first season matchup for them against this Clippers team. The game is the first of a three-game season series for these clubs, both looking to take round one. And I don't know if I'm going to call these guys rivals, but as conference opponents, they're still familiar with each other. Neither team will want to give an inch in this first meeting. And Adams with the slam. Well, a big guy with the motor is such a luxury in this league. Adams right there showing up big on the offensive glass, and then he converts. Now, here's going on. A 14-point game for him in the win against the Spurs in San Antonio. For Oklahoma City, they've gone just one of four to get this game started. Westbrook kicks to George. Feeds to Patterson. Had the space there, but it's offline. And right now, they're like a light switch in the off position. One of five so far. Not an ideal start. They grab their own miss. Out to Gallinari. Pass to Beverly. Westbrook with the steal. Oh, and a fast break for Oklahoma City. Oh! I know it's just two, but man, that's a nice two. Westbrook with the insane creativity. And one thing you have to say about Russell Westbrook, he is an absolute star. I mean, the type of player you can build around and win with. Just the total package on the offensive end of the floor. Ted Osich has checked in for Patrick Beverly. The numbers Westbrook put up last season in his MVP run, Greg, just staggering. And, and you figured his numbers would get a bump, <laughs> but I don't think anybody could have expected this guy to average a triple-double. I mean, arguably the most impactful superstar in the league. Here's Roberson. Oh, no yeah. way. I mean, just beautiful. And Roberson rising up and stretching out a bit to throw one in. And that last replay, courtesy of Under Armour. Another Unleashed Chaos moment. Griffin against Patterson. Pick by Griffin. Jordan with a screen on West. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Gallinari. Jordan kicks to Gallinari. And it's good. Assisting on the play was Jordan. Gallinari's got his first basket of the night. Nice swing, swing action there. Gallo, he simply squares up and rises to the occasion. Outside Westbrook. Up top, Adams. Back to Westbrook. From 13. No good that time. So Los Angeles will take it the other way. Rivers kicks to Gallinari. Back to Rivers. From past the arc. Westbrook pulls it in. Well, it was the Oklahoma City Thunder in their last game. A loss to the Nuggets in Denver. And on an ordinary night, guys, I think they would have come out on top. That's just how well they played. But they happened to catch an opposing team at the very top of their game. Yeah, both teams gave a very strong performance. I think that was a prime example of the home court advantage being just that, an advantage. You have to give a lot of credit to Austin Rivers for how he has improved since his rookie season. And one big reason for Rivers earning his spot is his improved efficiency. Had trouble shooting from the mid-range and out early on and worked on that part of his game, which opened up everything else for his skill. Shoot two. The first one falls. 
From the outset of Austin Rivers' career, it seemed like he never was quite comfortable. That is until just this last year, where he played consistently well coming off the bench for the Los Angeles Clippers. Seems to be a completely different player as he's found his niche in the league. Rivers hits both of them. Well, if you look at when things change for Rivers, really it was the 2016 playoff series against the Blazers. Well, it was interesting. Even though the team lost, he played great. And I think that was a huge shot of adrenaline and confidence in his game that he could consistently find that kind of effort and offense if he stepped out on the floor with the right mindset. How on earth did they let him get that wide open? Oklahoma City's gone 0 of 2 from deep here. Here's Westbrook. 26 points for him last game against the Nuggets in Denver. Ball movement was critical in this game. It did not stick with any one player, so his passing was on point, and he really picked apart the defense. Well, you, you have to like their work on the boards, Kevin, particularly here to start the game. The Thunder shooting a pretty distressing 27% here in the early minutes. Patterson passes to Westbrook. Shot to end this full run. More power of Westbrook shown there. Not many guys can finish through contact like that. For Los Angeles, they've gotten three of eight shots to fall for them here in the first quarter. George against Gallinari. Jordan the screen. And Gallinari kicks to Jordan. Oh, Griffin in position. That's tipped. And there's two points. Working on the glass, paying off that time. Westbrook with it. He has seven. Screen by Adams. Westbrook kicks to Adams. Passes to Patterson. Drills it from outside. Patterson's got himself going there. His first points of the game on the deep ball. Robertson very good at using the long part of his body, especially in how he screens to get his guys open. And it's Gallinari missing. Oklahoma City leading by three. Screen by Adams. Back to George. And the whistle blows to a chance here for a three-point play. Really well done there. Just confident and composed, never in a hurry. And he's got his first chance at the line here. Got to admire what he's been able to do at the free throw line this season. How about over 90%? So often nowadays in transition, Brent, we'll see a guy get to the rim and kick it out to someone standing at the three-point line. What's your feeling on that? Kevin, who is at the three-point line? Let's say Brent Barry's out. I'm more than okay with that. <laughs> you know, so, some, of the guys, some of the guys, Kevin, in the new age are, are running to the three-point line, and as the ball gets to the rim, yeah, the modern-day fast break is not your classic three-on-two, and we're going to take the wings coming in, and we're going to feed one guy for a layup. That first available wide-open three-point shot, whether two seconds into the possession or 12, is something coaches are willing to live with. Problem is, though, sometimes that big wants to run and does run, but you don't reward him, and then maybe they don't run the next time down. Well, that's exactly right, Kevin. You have a big Good guy shot. working that hard. Problem is, in today's game, some of those big guys are also running to that three-point line. You're exactly right. <laughs> the first one drops we know that Blake Griffin gives you a lot offensively but he's a very heady player even when not putting up the shot he can cut well moves to open spaces on the floor and he has a great eye for what's going on around him a terrific passer as a power forward and the Thunder going with a whole new group out there and that's good as he hits both of his shots and you talk about Griffin and his passing. I remember last season watching him, Brent, throw a behind-the-back, between-the-legs assist to a baseline cut. Wow. Well, your memory is rock solid, Kevin. I remember that play as well. And he's certainly in the conversation as being one of the best passing big men in the league. He's always put up big assist numbers. And some of the things that he can do, especially on the break, handling the basketball, can be just as impressive as a Blake Griffin dunk. 
And here is Williams. Following the three-pointer by Raymond Felton. Reed a screen on Felton. Here's Teodosic. It's deflected. Down low. A nice shot by Reed. Always tough to work the closer you get to the basket. Nice job of finding an angle on the pass there. Now here's Felton. Nine point game is last outing. Here's the screen. Here's Abrinas. He's guarded by Williams. Abrinas' shot is off. Uh, the defense, not, not so good. And when you're deep inside like that, you, you got to come through. So for the Clippers, Harrell comes in for Blake Griffin. And Decker subbed in for Gallinari. Good ball movement here by the Clippers. Teodosic, the pass to Reed. Williams dishes to Harrell. Now the pass to Teodosic. Felton attacking, and there's the call on Felton. That's his first foul. A chance here to assess what parts of the floor the attempts have been coming from as we look at the shot chart for Oklahoma City. And they've been doing a great job of getting into the paint and scoring inside. The defense allowing them easy access to the rim. And boy, are they taking advantage. Clippers trail by five. Teodosic, the pass to Williams. Pick by Harold. From the baseline. Offensive rebound. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. And their post play has been really solid right off the bat. Felt outside Collison to the left side wing. Abrinas kicks to Collison. Great use of the pick to create room for the jumper. Collison's got his first basket. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. Well, from our angle, that looked like that was going in. But uh, defense, fantastic how they contested it. Pass to Houston. He kicks to Grant. Over Decker. And too long on the shot. I'd just like to see the defensive effort get better for their ball club. They can't expect guys to miss the mid-range Jays every time. Pass to Teodosic. Out left to the wing. From about 16. A nice shot by Reed. Reed's got a second bucket tonight. Guys, he can get this shot anytime he wants. Now you bet with his height, not many defenders are going to challenge that mid-range jump shot. Here's Abrinas. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. And off to an incredible start here early from long range. Now here's Williams. Passes it to Teodosic. Like at six. He feeds it to Harold. It's rebounded by Oklahoma City. And they've come out with a take-no-prisoners approach on the glass here tonight, guys. Ooh, that's as forceful a finish as you're ever going to see out of this guy. Well, gee, it adds now to their lead in spectacular fashion. And to me, this is why they're winning, guys. Unlikely players stepping up huge against the defense that's really nowhere to be found. And that one's good. His second basket of four, shooting 50%. Coaching staff high-fiving themselves there, watching that team move the ball around, doing whatever is best for the team. Felton goes in. Here's Collison. No good there. Some solid defense from Reed. And this Clippers team has been in the hunt for a deep playoff run for some time. Consistently tried to get a veteran bench to help them with that goal, and they've succeeded there, but it's come at the cost of developing young players. Yeah, last season, the Clippers were the oldest team in the NBA by average age, and, and they have not had many injections of youth to revitalize or, or develop the roster uh, along with the success that they've had. And, you know, that could be really important for a young player to watch a team do great things They've relied on a lot of veterans, and there could be some cost or residual cost to not having some younger players. Find the lane. Find the lane. 
One shot. That free throw good from Decker. This OKC team is one of the best in the league when it comes to getting themselves to the free throw line. And a lot of that comes with the sheer force of Russell Westbrook, who draws a ton of fouls. But there's a few other crafty players who can get to work on the inside and find their way to the free throw line. Abrinas' shot is off. Well executed. Great rhythm. You've got to finish that one. Well, it's like Thanksgiving out there, carving out space off the screen. Just couldn't complete the play. Now here's Williams. He's coming off a 13-point game against the Spurs in San Antonio. Teardrop shot. That's tipped. They've been sensational on the backboard to start this game. And again, no good by Oklahoma City. The Thunder, a strong team at getting points off free throws, Brent. It helps having Cantor, who's also good at drawing fouls. Well, we see how much a team can have success just stealing easy points from the free throw line. So most teams that are near the top in terms of finding free throw attempts per game find their way into postseason play. The Thunder have set that trend. Westbrook's aggressiveness, Cantor on the inside, and Adams playing aggressive around the rim. Yeah, I love the communication and the chemistry between those teammates. Williams, double team. Sixteen seconds left here in the first quarter. Read a screen. They set the screen. Inside. Oh, and they get in the way of the alley-oop. Not to be. Good play defensively. At the end of one, a closely contested game so far. Thunder lead by three. And back with the start of the second quarter in just a moment. And power forward Patrick Patterson getting better every season. He said that his college career at Kentucky really helped prepare him for his life as a pro. You know, I think my three years at Kentucky, you know, caused what I am now, you know, as far as being a sound player, you know, a guy who's not all about himself, who puts his team first and who works hard and who doesn't talk back, who doesn't do the negative things. You know, he's a team player, he's a team guy, and he works hard. Patterson Clark, exactly the guy he says he is, and that's why he's one of those glue guys you've got to have on your team. And the kind of guy who his teammates love, because they know he's always going to have their back, always going to work hard, and, and always going to bring it. Well, it's been a tight one so far as we get the second quarter going back here. What stands out to you from Oklahoma City in this one? aggressive defense in that first period they forced several miscues and you just start to wonder how, how did we get to this score at the end of one I, I think those steals really established momentum in their favor we've got Nick Collison Grant is out there with Eustace then there's Felton and it's Abrinas in at the two that's the lineup in the game for Oklahoma City the Clippers shooting their sixth and seventh free throws in the game and and 75 percent on the season as a unit from the free throw line Two shots. Ties it up, and this next one could give them the lead. We see it so often. A player will languish in one system, then flourish in another. Brent, during your 14-year career, which coach's system fit you the best? You think? Well, I think my years in Seattle, we opened up the offense a little bit and had the opportunity to play more of a, a point off guard but I also enjoyed the structure of what Greg Popovich's system in San Antonio offered up as well always interesting Kevin with players who are languishing on benches for other ball clubs how general managers start to assess whether that guy can be part of something great if they were to bring him in I had the opportunity to play for a lot of great coaches and thought that I mixed up my game enough to make it a long career I wonder what the score would be if they weren't controlling the backboard. 
And he makes it look easy, dunking it hard with one hand. Yeah, how about the sharp steal and then run out? It looks like they're ready to put the hammer down. Well, we've been waiting for one of these teams, Greg, to pull away. Maybe that'll be a springboard for them. Well, this team now has to settle in right here and have a great possession without getting so aggressive that you compound your mistake. And here we go. Fast break. Beverly's got it. He dishes it to Reed. Second shot opportunity. But they get it back. And finally they hit one. Reed's got the lead up to one now for the Clippers. He has created some terrific opportunities for himself and really made the most of it. Felton can't get it to go. The defensive reaction time, it was just immediate on that one. And sometimes the most important part of that is the angle that the defender chooses. That time, he chose wisely. Oklahoma City's gone 3-7 of seven tonight from three-point territory. Here's Eustis. He's defended by Harrell. Eustis passes to Abrinas. Just five on the clock. And there's the pass to Eustis. Yep, that one goes in there. Eustis has got four this quarter. Now working the angles there, geometry class in session. Nice dish for the open look. Outside Williams. Harrell setting the pick for Williams. Reed, good, and it's Williams who picks up the assist. Reed's got the lead back up to one now for Los Angeles. And first time out of the game called for Oklahoma City. The former sixth man of the year in 2015, Lou Williams, can fill it up in a hurry. Sweet Lou. I mean, he is a terrific shooter. He uses that fadeaway to create some space, and he has really become a master at getting himself to the free throw line. He excels in this role in terms of creating efficient offense off the bench. And the Thunder going with a whole new group out there. Big group substitution here for the Clippers. Jordan, he's checked in for Reed. Griffin comes in for Harrell. Alan Ari, he's checked in for Decker. And it's Austin Rivers in for Lou Williams. Westbrook kicks to George. Adams sets the pick for George. Adams outside. And again, Oklahoma City, no good. The Clippers have gone just 33% from the field in what's been a cold second quarter for them. Just three of nine. And it's Gallinari missing. I, were those guys back on defense? I, I, I didn't see them. Somehow someone missed an assignment. Luckily, he bricked the mid-range. And again, no good by Oklahoma City. The Clippers in the lead. And uh, almost four minutes gone here in the second quarter of play. And Beverly kicks to Griffin. Shot on the wing. Doesn't go for him. Now Oklahoma City takes it the other way. Following this one, they get to host the Mavericks. And that will be the middle game of this three-game homestand. The three from George falls through. He's now made two of four. And there's never been any question about George's three-point range. He just goes through stretches where he knocks down the three at a ridiculous rate. Now here is Gallinari. Five points in the game. Jordan the screen. Here's Griffin. Not enough on that one as it misses. Oklahoma City's gotten into trouble with the three ball in the second quarter. Only hitting one of five attempts. Here's Roberson. Good. A nice assist from Westbrook. Now it's a four-point Oklahoma City lead. And that's just not something Russell came in doing, being a playmaker. But what we're seeing out of Westbrook now, great vision. Here's Griffin and the slam by Blake Griffin. And that's such solid, fundamental basketball on display right there, guys. You, you talk about it all the time, Greg. Yeah, great use of the pick to set up the dunk. But that's a play that only works by practicing over and over and having a great rhythm with your teammate. You could see the timing there. And so here is Oklahoma City. The Clippers get in the bucket. Westbrook, no good. Those are chances almost always you can rely on him to get you two points, but the D just enough to keep him out of rhythm. A nice shot by Gallinari. The D doing their best on this end, but not enough to stop Gallo there. And here's George. He had a 21-point outing in their last game against Denver. 
Here's Roberson. Patterson. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. It's going to be on Blake Griffin. For Oklahoma City, they have been solid at the line so far. Four for four. And the first one at the line is good. When a powerful athlete, Grant, like LeBron James, steamrolls his way to the rim, it's it's so difficult and so much stress on that defense. But who are some of the smaller slashers in the league that can have just as big an effect? A couple of guys I think about, Kevin, is Otto Porter in Washington, Thad Young in Indiana, and Trevor Ariza in Houston, although he likes to shoot threes, still a good slasher. Most of these guys, Kevin, play with guys who have the ball a ton. Wall and Beal in Washington, Teague and Paul George. So to be a creative scorer, if you're not shooting threes, you've got to find angles and opportunities as a slasher to put points on the board. Those guys do a pretty good job of it. The Thunder with the lead. It's Westbrook with the drive, and Westbrook throws it down. A monster drive there by Westbrook, so explosive. Contact phases him not in the slightest. L.A. has gone over 2 from deep here in the second. Bobs it up for Jordan, and out of bounds as the Thunder gain possession. Let's now take a moment to view the league's leading rebounds. Andre Jordan is second. And you can't win games without rebounding the basketball. That's what has made him such an important part of what they do. The Thunder leading by three. Westbrook dishes to George. That's good, and so Westbrook comes up with the assist. Eight points for George. Well, the game's four quarters, and after a tough first half, he's found his rhythm in the second. Down low. And Adams sends it back. Adams is a decent shot blocker, but relies on his position mostly, that time in the right spot. And here's Westbrook from the arc. And again, Oklahoma City with the triple. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket, coming off a pretty pass. They need this. A shot off that time. And Oklahoma City will go with it the other way. Kicks to Patterson. Shot from the top of the key. And Oklahoma City again with the bucket. And right now, the game plan seems to be working. It looks like this team has finally gotten into the club and found its rhythm, trying their best to pull away. And the Clippers decide to take their first time out here. Well, Steven Adams can have an impact on the game, certainly defensively, certainly with the screen setting. But how about the character of the center of this basketball team? One of the most quotable players in the league, and he'll never hold back from speaking his mind in an interview. Got to love his disposition. And with Adams being so likable and quotable, a lot of it has to do with his incredible wit. Well, I'm looking forward to the Stephen Adams talk show once his career is finished. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe before his career is finished. But when you're the younger sibling, you usually come up with a very refined sense of humor. Right, right. Like you, Brent. Now, here's Jordan. He's certainly been a consistent piece of their offense, averaging about 14 and a half points a game. A nice shot by Rivers. Aggressive move off the dribble. You could see the confidence growing right now for Austin Rivers. Westbrook with it. He's got 12. Outside for George. Offline with his three. Well defended that time. He's a shooter that the D has to close down on quickly when he's ready to pull the trigger. Now here's Griffin. Parked down low that time, and he got the three-second call. And a chance here to look at the numbers for Westbrook. Averaging about 26 points per, six assists, and five rebounds. And impressive numbers, no doubt. It's the kind of run we've come to expect from him. Synergy, all elements right now working together, and the game is coming so easy right now. 
And Roberson gets the banish. Takes the alley -oop pass and dunks it down. Now Robertson, a nice job that time distributing the basketball and a dependable player in these offensive schemes if he does that. Clippers trail by 10. Outside Griffin. A three-pointer, no good. And not a night he's going to want to remember. Just not really able to score the basketball. Screen by Adams. Westbrook against Beverly. The kick out to Westbrook. The feed to Robertson. Down to five on the shot clock. From deep, George. And he's good on the three ball. George has got a couple of three-pointers in the second for Oklahoma City. There's the dish to Gallinari. Jordan with a screen on George. George against Gallinari. Over George. Los Angeles with another miss. Oklahoma City leading by 13. Rovers in the pass to George. In the corner, it's Westbrook. Off target from outside. Los Angeles has gone 0-3 from beyond the arc to start the second quarter. Griffin dishes to Beverly. Jordan with the screen on George. Jordan the screen. Paul George with the steal. Outside Westbrook. Back to George. Three-pointer. Good. Nice assist from Westbrook. 14 points for George. Yeah, those are starting to add up, guys. Of their last five baskets, three have been tripled. Obs it up for Jordan. Stolen away. Nice job to interrupt the alley-oop attempt there. Westbrook kicks to Patterson. That one good for two. Patterson's got seven points for the quarter. Now you could just tell in his gait and in the look on his face, he's in a great rhythm after a terrific first quarter. He is feeling it here in the second. Now here's Beverly. He had 10 points in the win against San Antonio. Here's Griffin. Dishes it to Beverly. Right side Griffin. Looking to end the drought, and he dunks it right on Patrick Patterson. Ouch! Wow, what a moment right there. Griffin putting on a show. He is just an awesome dunker. Now a timeout called by Oklahoma City. And, Brent, of course, you started your career with the Clippers and played for him for several seasons. Looking back, do you have a moment that you describe as your favorite with that team? I think my favorite moment, Kevin, was playing a game against the Phoenix Suns and ended up being a very close and competitive contest and I ended up making a game winner against the Suns but the coolest part about it was after the game when Charles came by as I was making my way out of the arena and came over and said nice job Rook I appreciated that very much here's Felton after the Clippers pick up two just four to shoot up and in on the layup Felton's got five points so far yeah and they're shooting really starting to pick up here in the second. Feeds to Harrell. They set the pick. Read a screen. Williams with a clean look. A shot missing. Now Oklahoma City takes it the other way. Oh man, still a goose egg for him in the scoring column. Outside Felton. Jacks up a three. Oklahoma City gets it back. Collison. Seven second difference. Shot in game clock. Grant outside. Reed with the steal. Fast break. Here they come. Jumps up. And it's Dicker with the finish. My goodness. That was absolutely filthy. Oh, nasty. This building is stunned. He dug deep, Greg, into his bag of tricks there. Here's Houston. And it's the Clippers with the rebound. Reed's got rebound number five here tonight. Here's Teodosic. Paul George, he's been the guy making things happen for Oklahoma City. He comes away with 11 points in the quarter and is showing no signs of fatigue. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Kevin, thanks. Billy, balanced scoring for your team. How pleased are you with the way they're keeping everybody involved offensively? 
Well, those guys, I think, have done a really good job of moving the ball and sharing the ball, and they're finding open men and they're willing passers, and I think because of that, they've been efficient offensively. Open shots tend to be made. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David, for that interview, and we'll see you back here after the break for third quarter basketball. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. We so hope you enjoyed our first half. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith. This is the Halftime Report. Paul George taking care of business in this one. He had 14 points, two rebounds, and one steal. Kenny, let's get your take on Oklahoma City. The thing I've noticed more than anything is how well they spread the floor at the offensive end. Their spacing has been fantastic, and the end result has been a lot of good looks from three-point land. And now they've established themselves from long range, and the defense has to adapt. They're in really solid position right now. And over to Shaq, now your take on the Clippers. They were not running an efficient offense. The shot selection has to improve. It's as simple as that. Too many guys working as individuals, not as a team. They need to work as a unit, Ernie. Move the ball. And now, folks, just moments away from the start of the third quarter. Welcome back to Oklahoma City, everyone. You can see Chesapeake Energy Arena there in the background as the cars stream down I-40. And as we begin the second half, first half wasn't even close, guys, and we'll see if there is a comeback on our hands or more of the same as we get the third quarter started. You look at Paul George in this game, guys, he, he's been everywhere. Yeah, and through two quarters, he, he's been lights out, and, and you know he's going to look to add to those totals. And, and defensively, hard to force him out of the rhythm at this point because he has a number of ways with which he can beat you. Well, we're getting back to the action now. It's been a one-team show so far. We'll see if that changes here in the third. Getting underway in the second half. Here's the five for Jack Rivers. Gallinari, the three with Griffin at the four. Patrick Beverly out there with Rivers. And it's Jordan in at the center. The Thunder leading by 16. Oh! oh. Oh, he is a highlight reel unto himself, guys. Uh, that could be a contender for the dunk of the year, I think. That Unleash Chaos Under Armour replay really giving us a good look at the action. Now, here's Westbrook. He kicks to Patterson. Good. A nice assist from Westbrook. Westbrook's got six assists in the game. Beautiful assist by Westbrook. The defense has to play him to score, which allows him to create for others. And Beverly kicks to Griffin. And stolen by Patterson. And pushing it up here. Here is Oklahoma City. Westbrook leading the charge. Well, there you go. One team operating on all cylinders at both ends. Steals, fast break buckets, and, and the other team in scramble mode. Now, here's Beverly. Looking for his first basket still in this one. Griffin passes to Rivers. Out to the right wing. Jordan with a screen on Westbrook. Shot clock at six. And Adams sends it back. Robertson dishes to George. To the inside. Robertson can't hit. Yeah, but they're three of four to start the second half. Rivers gets a wide open look. No good with the triple. And they just cannot seem to get it going so far in this half, missing their first three shots. Robertson can't hit. Well, the defense better look up and say thanks. Leaving guys that wide open is not a recipe for success. Gallinari in the corner. Jordan the screen. Gallinari with it. Now defended by Adams. Too long in the paint, and he's hit with a three-second violation. For Los Angeles, they have made the most out of their opportunities at the line. They have yet to miss in seven attempts. One shot on the lane. And so he hits the technical free throw. Well, for his whole career, Gallinari has been viewed as a small forward, but 
Brent, every so often he'll find minutes at the four, and with the way the NBA is going, I wouldn't be surprised to see him more often there than not. Well, if he does transition, Kevin, to the four spot for Gallinari, the question is, who is it that he's defending on the other side? If it's a quick four man that has the same kind of range and can put the ball on the deck, that becomes a tough matchup for Gallinari, but certainly his ability to shoot the ball will provide space for other wing players. Well, you know what DeAndre Jordan is going to give you. He's going to grab every rebound available out there and block shots defensively. And on offense, you're going to find him around the rim and finishing lobs. On the free throw, no good. And with Jordan, he had a better season, Brent, in 2017 with his free throw shooting. Well, 50% is a big improvement, but still not good enough. He's a liability out there on the floor late in the games because of the free throw shooting. But another offseason for DeAndre Jordan to address that issue and come back and be better. Yeah, check out the hops on Blake Griffin. Just one of those lethal alley-oop threats in the NBA. Patterson a screen on Gallinari. And George, here we go. And Roberson kicks to West. That three off the mark. Well, in the rebounding game, at least, it's been a strong physical performance for him. Here's Gallinari. It's hauled in by George. George has got his third rebound tonight. Outside Westbrook. Here's Roberson. Seven points in the game. And Jordan sends it back. You see, he can't just throw up stuff like that with DeAndre Jordan lurking around. Well, that's a shot right there. He's going to hit nine times out of ten. We just saw the 10% he doesn't make. The Thunder with another miss. Clippers trail by 20. Gallinari inside the three-point line. Hits the front of the rim and out. It's almost like he's trying to make things hard on himself. You know, he's just got to slow the game down, try to get some easy ones. And George just has that extra gear. Well, once he kicks into it, he is nearly impossible to stop. Los Angeles calls timeout. It has to be for a lot of teams a fearsome part of their roster. This Clipper team having both Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan as their starters, both all-star caliber players. If they go unchecked, these two guys can go on the run. And with the Clippers, they do have that amazing 4-5 tandem. One of the best combinations of dunking big men ever on a team. Well, they certainly are one of the more exciting combinations of forward and center, consistently getting above the rim and, and maybe taking the heart out of you with the way they get up there and finish so many lobs and demoralize your defense. Jordan the screen for three. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact and he'll shoot two. And the sheer size of Jordan is just so tough for defenders sometimes to deal with. Skilled at picking up the foul there. Hey, Greg, when you look at all the dunks that DeAndre Jordan has on his resume, it's pretty impressive. And Jordan, I feel, is even underrated with his dunking ability. Very agile. You can see that in warm-ups as well as the dunk contest. His unmatched power when attacking the rim, really unprecedented. He may be the best athlete in the league. Free throw good, Jordan. I think what separates Jordan from most of the other centers is sheer athleticism, using it whenever he can on both ends of the floor. So after making the first, he goes one for two. A hey Brent and other sports later draft picks often become all-star level players. That seems to be much more rare in the NBA. Why do you think that is? I'm not sure, Kevin. And there are a lot of great finds for NBA teams in the second round and even late into the second round as guys who make solid contributions not only to their team right away because they might be more mature players that are passed over because the young guys show potential. I think the scouts do a great job of finding that rare talent Maybe they're selected a little bit more early than they would be in previous drafts. There's much more information out there for GMs to get at. Here's Westbrook following the basket by DeAndre Jordan. 
Here's Adams, and the refs are going to rule that unnecessary contact. It's a flagrant one foul. And, Kevin, that's a pretty dangerous play right there. I mean, I don't like to see a player put an opponent in harm's way. As much as you just saw him do there, glad a they pinned a, a, a flagrant on it. Yeah, you're right, Greg. The officials were all over it. They weren't going to let him off the hook that time. First free throw is good. Well, Adams has his struggles at the free throw line, but he's making strides in that area and still has work to do. No good on the second free throw. Here's Westbrook. He's got 12. Pass to Patterson. Oklahoma City moving the ball around. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. For Oklahoma City, they have scored six points from their eight attempts at the line so far. Gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. We'll throw good. Paul George. George drops them both. Los Angeles has gotten blank from three-point land so far in the third. Still 0 for 3. Jordan the screen. Malinari on the wing. Defended by George. The Thunder pull it in. Adams has got seven rebounds in the game. Shoots the three. And there's Paul George on the assist by Westbrook. And that's now 21 points for Paul George. And for the Clippers, they're shooting at 36% on the night. They've got to step it up offensively. Beverly, the pass to Gallinari. Jordan with a screen on George. Shoots from 14, and he knocks down the jumper. And that's 10 points for Gallinari. And not his quarter, scoring-wise. Just one of seven from the field. Outside Westbrook. And then jam down as he goes right over DeAndre Jordan. Well, the defense respecting the shot right there, and that creates a lane for him to drive right through. That's his game. The Clippers shooting 31% here in the third. Offensively, they are looking bleak. They set the pick. Jordan dishes to Gallinari. And it's Gallinari again missing. Right now, he's just out of sync. A lot of shots rimming out, and he's got to try to find something different. And Roberson kicks to Westbrook. Pass to Patterson. Just five to shoot. Roberson the pass to Adams. Over Jordan. Jordan with the rebound. Jordan's got rebound number 12 here already in the game. Griffin attacking. And the aggressiveness of Griffin always on the attack. And I love that tenacity, Kevin. Now a timeout called by Oklahoma City. One of the most impressive things about Blake Griffin is Greg when he gets out and runs the open floor. Yeah, not to mention his ability to run the break himself. Uh, a terrific ball handler, even under pressure. And one of the best passers at the four in the league, if not the best. A platoon swap here for the Clippers. And here is the shot chart as we see how things are going for Gallinari. And when you look at this shot chart, you, you get a good visual of just how often they are settling for something outside. They, they have to know that this defense wants them to take those kinds of shots, and they would be a lot better off if they recommit to attacking the basket. 
Oklahoma City has gone three of five with the long ball since entering the second half. Belton kicks to Grant. Stolen by Decker. Two on one as they jump out on the break. Here's Teodosic. The fast break ends at the rim with a jam. And that's what you want in transition, a high percentage opportunity. Uh, the story is true. And here the defense does a very poor job of matching up. Felton the pass to Houston. Grant gets a wide open look. Prills the three-pointer. And you can see the play calling this half. Another one from distance. Yeah, no question. It looks like they've rented out room along the perimeter in this ball game. And they're likely to keep doing this until the defense makes an adjustment. Here's Decker. And again, the Clippers good for two. They're consistently finding ways to get the ball inside and taking full advantage. Outside, Felton. And it's Grant in the corner. Good. A nice assist from Felton. Grant's got a pair of threes now here in the third for the Thunder. Now Williams. No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. Clippers moving the ball around. Out of bounds. Oklahoma City takes possession. And now you see the 2K leaderboard. Not only have these teams caused a lot of turnovers over the last 10 games, but they've scored off them as well. In third, the Thunder. I mean, they've gotten a little more aggressive defensively. You can become a more confident team on that end, and so much of it, I think, has to do with forcing turnovers and creating offense. They set the screen. Grant kicks to Collison. Wing shot on the way. That's short off the rim. They've been the better rebounding team by a healthy margin, but it hasn't been enough. Decker passes to Teodosic. Back to Decker. Takes the three. Connects from three-point range. Decker's got five points now in the quarter. Well, the defense looked lost there. Get out your compass. No excuses. You got to guard the perimeter. Collison dishes to Grant. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. And Jeremy Grant, a member of the great Grant family line that has had so many NBA players. Well, I played with his Uncle Horace in Seattle, and the thing that I like about Grant is there's just nothing in terms of nonsense when he has the ball. It's straight line drives right to the rim, and he's coming down hard around the rim. Two shots. That free throw missing. And Jeremy Grant just has such a great combination of athleticism and explosiveness. It's up to him to find familiar spots on the floor and do a good job of playing off his teammates to make an impact on every game that he plays. He hits the second from the line. L.A. has gone into a slump here from three-point range, shooting just one of five here in the third. Williams for three. They get the rebound. Three. All on the play. Basket counts, so it'll be a three-point play chance. I mean, he is just demoralizing his opponent right now on the backboard. They didn't want anything to do with him on that possession, almost like they were just giving up on the play. Well, we saw this same kind of attack in the last game. Ferocious effort in back-to-back -back outings. That one misses. In last season, you'll recall, Brent, uh, Doc Rivers challenging this Clippers team to cut down on technical fouls. I think they just wanted to get away from all the whining that was going on. Uh, I think some people were actually bringing cheese to the game for the Clippers to go with that whine. I kid you, Kevin. Yeah, I know. But you just don't want to waste energy on things like that that are going on throughout the course of the game and to have that kind of reputation around the refereeing circles. And here is Williams. He's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. 
Oh, and just a soft touch on both ends of that pretty alley. -oop. I got to say, when he threw the pass, I didn't know where it was going. Felton kicks to Eustace. Passes it to Grant. Yeah, it's Abrinas, top the key. Taken away by Williams. And the call will be against Alex Abrinas. And that'll be his third foul so far. They have a very long way to go to get within sight of the lead. And from what we've seen so far, guys, don't hold your breath. And so Doc Rivers has had enough. Timeout. Well, they've been turning that ball over way too much, and they really need to address this if they want to win this game. Huddle up, boys. Here we are in November. Let's see how things are shaking out in the West early in the season. Taking a look at Oklahoma City. Right there in fifth position, middle of the pack in the conference. And, of course, Los Angeles. Right now, they're five spots below them. And when I look at Oklahoma City, this hasn't been the breakout season that many were predicting, but they're still very much in the hunt for a high postseason seed, and that will keep them focused here during the season's final stages. Well, the goal is very defined. They have to have a strong finish to the season and make sure they get home court advantage for at least the first few rounds of the playoffs. For Los Angeles, they have been shooting right around 75% at the line, 9 of 12 so far. And the first one drops. So many coaches from the college ranks that have come up to the NBA and not been quite as successful as the run that gave them that opportunity. Billy Donovan certainly has found success early on here in Oklahoma City. Great couple years for him to begin his professional coaching career. Good on both. Several playoff appearances, even when losing a major star like Durant. Donovan certainly has shown he's more than capable at the NBA level. I think Billy Donovan did a great job of leaning on what the assistant coaching staff for his ball club has to offer him. Tons of experience there, and so he opened his ears and listened to those things and then chose what he wanted to implement within his system. It also doesn't hurt that Russell Westbrook has stuck around, Kevin. And he's able to get it back. And the wide open shot from Decker. That three off the mark. That's where I like the shot selection. The defense cannot afford to give up wide open shots. And they dodged a bullet there. And lots of credit for the team around him. They're picking up the slack here tonight. He just can't buy a bucket right now. And Jeremy Grant picks up the foul. That's his third foul so far. Bonus situation in effect, so we'll head to the free throw line for two. First free throw is good. And Milos Teodosic, one of the bigger names in basketball, not to play in the NBA last season, Greg. Yeah, I mean, the Clippers brought him over from Europe to help kind of ease the loss of Chris Paul. He's a terrific playmaker who is one of the best passers in the world. And, and not young, but respected by many around the globe. Here's Eustace. He's got eight. And it's Reed pulling it down. Reed's got his seventh rebound of the game with that last one. The pass to Teodosic. Off target from outside. Oklahoma City leading by 20. Outside, Felton. And it's Reed pulling it down. The Clippers shooting a lackluster 38% for the game, struggling so far. And the call will be against Alex Abrinas. That will get him his fourth foul of the game. And due to the bonus, we will head to the line for two. Utah. 
And that one falls for Williams. And Williams is sort of the classic instant offense guy. Whether he's coming off the bench or starting, he can provide a spark whenever they need one. And both free throws good for Lou Williams. Oklahoma City shooting 49% on the game. They'll take that. Outside, Felton. 30 seconds left in the third. Abrinas' shot is off. Clippers trail by 18. Here's Teodosic. Off target with his three. You know what? He's just stone cold right now. Really not sure if he's their best option offensively as they try to get back in this game. Abrinas kicks to Collison. Back to Abrinas. Good, and the assist goes to Collison. Collison's got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. Just four seconds left in the third. Here's Abrinas, and the release was before the buzzer, but it's off target. And so it's Oklahoma City with a 21-point lead to end the quarter, and they're winning the turnover battle very easily in this one. We'll take a quick break, and then back to the action here. And now we take a look back to Doc Rivers talking to his team from his huddle. We can't do it on our own. We gotta play together, we gotta share together, all right? It's simple basketball. Always preaching teamwork, Doc Rivers laying it down for his team moments ago in their huddle. Yeah, I think he sees where certain individuals are kind of taking it upon themselves and that's not helping right now. Welcome back as we get ready to start the fourth quarter. Not exactly a nail biter here, but you never know. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade for the fourth quarter. Taking a look at the Thunder. They've got Grant. Nick Collison out there with Eustace. Then there's Felton. And it's Abrinas in at the two. Teodosic, the pass to Williams. And he lobs it up toward the rim. And that'll be Oklahoma City's ball as it goes out of bounds. Some turnovers necessary. That one, not so much. Adams, he's checked in for Oklahoma City. Paul George comes in for Jeremy Grant and then for Los Angeles. Griffin's checked in for Reed. Alinari comes in for Decker. And it's Patrick Beverly in for Teodosic. Oklahoma City leading by 21. Abrinas kicks to Adams. He feeds it to George. Screen by Adams. He used that pick to perfection. Houston has got the fourth quarter going with the first basket of the period here for Oklahoma City. Beverly dishes to Griffin. Back to Beverly. It's stolen by Adams. Felton with the ball. To the left wing. Houston passes to Adams. To the paint. Shot clock at six. Here's George. Poke loose. Guys, we've seen a lot of turnovers in this one. Yeah, focus, focus, focus. Just make the simple play. Absolutely fearless. I mean, a, a nice, subtle adjustment there going up against Wynn. Yeah, this is the feel of a player to use his body to keep the shot from being blocked. Excellent work there. A different look for Oklahoma City. Patterson, he's checked in for Houston. Roberson comes in for Alex Sabrinas. And Russell Westbrook subbed in for Raymond Felton. And Los Angeles making a change here as well. Jordan, he's checked in for Harrell. Shooting one. Free throw no good for Lou Williams. With the premium players and outside shooting Brent plus defensive rules that lessen the need to defend in isolation. Will we see guys playing for more years than ever before? Less wear and tear because there's less of it inside in games. You know, that's a great point, Kevin. I, I think that you're right about that. I also think that whatever we're doing off the court in terms of the players with nutrition and training regimen, that that's going to be another reason why we'll see players be very effective well into their late 30s and sometimes into their Two early shots. 40s, which is about my limit, Kev. I'm still effective at 45. You are. 
Very effective at 45. <laughs> that one is off. And missing opportunities here to extend that lead at the free throw line this half. And he sinks the second. Austin Rivers, he's checked in for the Clippers. We're just over a minute and a half now into the fourth. And pushing it up, here's Los Angeles. Colinari wide open. The Thunder pulled in. And that was an easy one there, just a missed opportunity. Yeah, sometimes everything can go right, but the shot doesn't go down. Nothing there is automatic. Westbrook kicks to Patterson. Here's George. Some solid defense from Gallinari. And for the Clippers, they're shooting a lackluster 38% for the game, struggling so far. And it's Gallinari again missing. Well, he made one three in the first half, but he hasn't found a way to connect again from outside during the second. Westbrook dishes to Adams over Jordan. And he makes no mistake on the slam dunk. Great effort from Adams there. We know he has that size to take the contact, but determined on that play to get the points. The Clippers have gone one of three from the field to start the fourth quarter. And DeAndre Jordan throws it down. Oh, Kev, he put some <laughs> anger behind that one. You're telling me. The Thunder leading by 22. George passes to Westbrook. He dishes it to Adams. Patterson, the screen. Oklahoma City moving the ball around. Adams sets the pick for George. Adams, right side. Five on the clock. From outside the arc. The shot, no good. The Clippers go the other way with it. Looking ahead to their next game and playing at New Orleans, they'll match up against the Pelicans. That'll be the third game of this three-game road trip. Well, determined that time to get to the rim, anticipating the pass, and a rim rocker. Here's Roberson. Here's Westbrook. Got a hand on it. Griffin with it. George picks him up. Griffin kicks to Rivers. Brandon is an era of shorter player contracts, sometimes with opt-outs after one or two years. Does that breed too much of a win-now mentality among teams? Oh, so shorter contracts, Kevin, but taller players? Yeah, exactly. You got it. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's interesting the way that teams want to set themselves up. Obviously, if you have a bona fide star, you want to do what you can to lock him up and have him as part of your organization and the concrete and the foundation for what you do moving forward. But a lot of guys certainly on the move and on loan for seasons where they want to take a shot at the true contenders. Fourth quarter of play and over three and a half minutes have gone by. Beverly against Westbrook. And Beverly kicks to Jordan. Griffin attacking. Good for his sixth make in a dozen attempts, shooting 50% with that basket. The skills of Blake Griffin shown on that attempt, simply too much for the defense. Robertson dishes to Westbrook. Over Rivers. A shot's good from Westbrook. And the Thunder lead by 20. Defensively, this is what you know. He's coming off a hot game and looking to keep it rolling. And you could try to key in on him, but that's tough. They run plays that routinely give him makeable looks. Now flying high and throwing it down with the one hand. One of his favorite moves right there, guys. Here's Roberson. The tray. He's now made half of those 10 shots in the game. That's his fifth basket. You know, you hear that A word all the time, aggressive, and sometimes just being that can turn your game around. He's been that in the second half, their go-to guy here. Now, here is Golinar. Left side, George. And George with the stuff. And I just love the aggressiveness from George. Just slicing apart the defense with that terrific ability to penetrate. For Los Angeles, they've gone five of eight shooting as we've come down the home stretch in this final quarter. Here's Colinari. And that's good. A nice job on the glass as they pick up two on the second effort. That's the tenth straight point they've given up in the paint. 
And George kicks to Westbrook. Patterson setting the pick for Westbrook. There's the feed to Patterson. Adams outside. Down to five on the shot clock. Shoots from 12. The shot by George, no good. And he completely threw the timing off on that jumper. That is how you D up. Playing with tremendous aggressiveness without fouling. That's an excellent job. Oklahoma City leading by 19 points. Outside Westbrook. Patterson, the screen, kicks it to George. Back to Westbrook. There's the three. It's hauled in by Los Angeles. Jordan's got rebound number 15 here tonight. Here's Gallinari. And it's Gallinari again missing. Man, if he's missing those kind of good looks. His team is in some serious trouble. Adams with the screen on Gallinari. George passes to Patterson. And again, no good by Oklahoma City. Clippers trail by 19. Griffin with it. Guarded now by Patrick Patterson. And there's the foul. That's on Steven Adams. That's his third foul of the game. Yeah, a little too physical on that play. Tries to climb over the top of him and gets whistled for it. Big difference between aggressiveness and awareness. There's no way he's getting that rebound right there. Westbrook against Beverly. Jordan the screen. And here's Gallinari outside. Sinks the three-pointer. I mean, letting that guy shoot freely from out there, he's going to destroy you from the perimeter if you do that. Here's Roberson. There's the dish to Patterson. Outside Westbrook. Six to shoot. Fouled in the act of shooting. A three-point play chance coming up. Well, body and control isn't just for your shampoo at home. It's right there in Russell Westbrook. He gets fouled and still converts. One shot. Well, the chase for the triple-double last year with Russell Westbrook was one of the most incredible seasons the NBA has ever seen. And I think that everybody who's a ball player thinks about the point guard rebounding as tenaciously and as consistently as Russell did last season as being the most incredible part of his season. Good decision to kick the ball out as the defense collapsed. The Thunder leading by 17 to the inside foul call that time on the way up that'll give him two chances at the free throw line here and Westbrook has always been a great rebounder but that was seemingly the most surprising aspect of all of his triple doubles yes yeah, six foot three inches tall and leaping out of the building and over the top of guys six eight six ten and snatching boards his previous high for rebounds was under eight a game which is impressive in its own right but what a huge jump to grab over 10 in a triple-double season. Still remarkable stuff. The first free throw is good. Well, he's an NBA scoring champion. Westbrook sure has improved his entire offensive repertoire since his days in Westwood. Both free throws good from Westbrook. Clippers trail by 19. Now here's Beverly. Griffin sets the screen for Beverly. And Griffin, here we go. And sticking right with it, gets the foul with the bucket, and he'll go to the line. And Griffin's such a special talent. He connects on those difficult finishes time and time again.
Free throw drops for Griffin. Well, Griffin every night is a double-double threat. Oklahoma City leading by 16. Patterson, the screen. Adams with the screen on Gallinari. And George, here we go. Now Gallinari. Shot from the wing. The shot misses. Here's Roberson. In the corner, it's Westbrook. Good on the triple. Westbrook's got 24 points. And he's starting to show that killer instinct this quarter, looking to extend the lead. Beverly dishes to Griffin. Good ball movement here by the Clippers. And stolen by Patterson. To the middle. It's tipped. Golinari with the steal. Ball going up court. Rivers can't get it to go. Oh, you, you've got to be able to deliver when you get a bunny like that. That's just too easy of a shot to miss. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. It's so subtle, but what an effective up fake from Westbrook there. The defender couldn't help but take a bite. Two shots. And the first one drops. Hey, Brent, when you look at the all-star balloting, it's amazing how many worthy point guards have to be left off the roster. How'd the league end up with so many great players at that position uh, all at once. It's, it's an amazing story. It has been an incredible crop. I mean, really the golden era of point guards. And the, the one guy who I feel really badly for over the course, certainly of the last five or six seasons, is one Mike Conley. Any coach in the league would take Mike Conley at the drop of a hat, yet he's dealing with, over the course of his career, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Tony Parker, Steve Nash, Chauncey Billups, Chris Paul. Should I go on, Kevin? It is a very, very tough position. Those names, it says it all. Now, here's George. And two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the contact. It's going to be on Blake Griffin. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And the first one drops. And both free throws, good for Paul George. Hey, Brent, we've seen a number of super teams created via free agency or trade. Do you think that's good for the league? I think it's great for the league. I think it's awesome to see some of the great players play on the same court together and some of the chemistry that that creates. But what's been interesting over the course of the last couple seasons, Kevin, is that we've had these young marquee players stepping up in environments and with organizations now that are must-see TV. So aside from the super teams, there are young players carrying their team to hopefully greater and greater heights that keep you interested in all 30 teams in the league. Beverly against Westbrook, and then Griffin with the dunk. I think right now that Blake Griffin is a pretty good option. You? Adams sets the pick for Westbrook. This is to Adams. 
back to Westbrook. Six to shoot. 13 feet away. Jordan with the rebound. Jordan's got rebound number 17, if you can believe that. Gallinari, the open look. The second effort. And there's the nice layup by Griffin. Griffin's got 23 points. Yeah, Griffin does not give up on that play. Pounding away on the boards. His intensity becoming infectious. Outside Westbrook. Screened by Adams. And Westbrook, here we go. And there's the whistle on the shot. Took the foul, shot misses. He'll be shooting two. There's the foul against the Clippers. Over the decades, the way the league has grown, phenomenal. Doing no small part to the leadership. Brent, what are some of the key traits you've seen of these two great NBA commissions? I think the one thing about both Super David two. Stern and Adam Silver that they have done a great job with is that they're approachable. There, there doesn't seem to be a time, at least in an NBA player's career, where they don't feel like they could either call the office and within maybe a day or two hear from somebody from the league office. But the fact that both David Stern and Adam Silver find their way out to arenas throughout the regular season, come to see every team, that approachability, I think, far and away sets those two gentlemen aside. And that's good as he hits both of his shots. Clippers trail by 20. Yes, and, and with this one winding down, it's obvious to everyone who watched it, just a total mismatch and a true show of strength for the Thunder. It was a standout performance across the board. I mean, it, it was like watching a cat play with a mouse. They, they were able to do more or less whatever they wanted. And now, for the year, this is going to take them to seven wins. And, and once it becomes official, this win gives them a nice confidence boost against this team. They'll face them twice more this season. And we watched one guy all night long, guys, and, and look at the stats just confirms what a dominant game he had. What a night tonight it was for Russell Westbrook. Uh, he came in with a focus and brought that dominant performance to the defense all night long, controlling the pace of the game and was firing on all cylinders. Here's Williams following the basket by Russell Westbrook. Outside Williams. Shot clock at six. Hits the front of the rim and out. Reed misses. And you got to give him credit there. Great effort to contest that shot. Well, I love the fact that they put the security system on their house, protecting the paint there. Now here's Westbrook. Pass to Houston. To the wing on the left. Here's Abrinas. The wing jumper off target. So no problem for Oklahoma City as they get the win. They poured it on tonight. Dominant showing in front of a crowd that loved every minute of it. And, you know, this game could really be a defining one for what they can do when they are playing at their best. I mean, being here at home no doubt helps, and the execution was flawless. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thank you, Kevin. Now, Nick, coming off of that loss last game, what was different about how you played tonight? Uh, well, today particularly, uh, we came out, we didn't have those bad stretches. Tonight, we were just solid the whole way. That's the thing with us. we got to have that consistency. We play consistent when we're tough to beat. Hey, Nick, great game. Thanks. Congratulations. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. And that about wraps it up. So for David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, Brent Berry, and the whole 2K Sports crew, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for being with us. We'll see you next time. Have a great evening.